Profoto makes some of the most high-end lighting for professional photographers on the market today, and they recently came out with a firmware update which allows you to use these professional strobe lights with a smartphone. So I thought it would be fun to do a photo shoot where one of us gets the brand new iPhone and then the other gets a DSLR camera and see who can take the best picture. Okay. You wanna do like a rock, paper, scissors? All right. Three, two, one, shoot. Winner takes the DSLR. Winner gets the DSLR. Okay, let's do it. Three, two, one. Boom! Uh, it's all yours. This is, this is where I feel more comfortable. I don't think you guys are gonna be able to tell. Uh, I think they are. This video is sponsored by ACDC's Photo Studio Ultimate 2021. If you're looking for photo editing software that can replace both Lightroom and Photoshop in just one program that happens to be far more affordable, definitely check this out. For just $8.90 a month, you can get Photo Studio Ultimate, Luxia Video Editor, and Video Converter Pro 5. Or if you don't want to deal with the monthly plans, you can buy the software outright. But don't worry about buying anything right now. Head over to the link in the description, download the 100% free trial, and check it out for yourself. All right, so we're out here at the beach, and everybody's tendency is to shoot towards the ocean. I don't think that ever really works. It usually just looks like a brown or blue line behind your subject. I don't think it looks very good. So instead, I'm actually going to be shooting towards some of the nice, beautiful green trees that we have in the opposite direction. And then using the Pro Photo app, I am going to be strobing my subject with the iPhone app. And I've got an assistant today. What is your name? We're we're, oh, right. we're filming, oh, it, we're it, filming it. a video. Okay, yeah, here. If you can please uh, set up right over here. Idiris, if I can get you to lean or lay up against this tree. Maybe for the first shot, I'm gonna get you to kind of lean right here and I'm gonna shoot this way. So let me just first work on my composition here. And with the app, I can shoot with uh, both of my cameras. I'm gonna zoom in with my telephoto and I need to switch into manual here and then manually darken this shot up. All right, assistant. Oh, you're gonna manually hold it for me. Getting my money's worth today. All right, let's do a test shot here. No light connected. All right, Mike, are we on? Gotta update the, uh, the strobe. Apparently we used another one last time. Uno momento, por favor. Okay, we'll do a few test shots here. I mean, it looks just like a strobe shot with a DSLR. I don't think anybody on the internet is gonna be able to tell that one of these was shot with an iPhone. Looks crazy. Let me get you to stand back up again. And can you look out to see just a little bit for me? Perfect. I'm strobing really heavy right now. Maybe a little too much. I'm at level nine. Exactly like on a DSLR, I can control the exposure of the ambient light and then I can come in and fine tune the exposure uh, with the flash as well, separately. I'm shooting RAW plus JPEG on a freaking cell phone. That's crazy. This softbox is working perfectly right now because we've got natural soft light anyway out here. So if I were to use a bare bulb light, we would be introducing light that looks fake. This looks like it could be real. So here are some of the shots. These are a little bit more natural light, and then I've got some heavier strobe light back here. Yeah, I think that's really pretty. Take a look at that. <laughs> it's crazy that you can do this with a cell phone now. All right, Patrick, time's a waste in. I think you have like 20 minutes, <laughs> so we better switch places. Come on, assistant. We're heading down here to our favorite cliff spot, and the goal is to shoot back at this incredible landscape. It's gonna look a lot better than the shot you just took. All right, Mike, just uh, we're straight through here. So here we are on the famous F-Stoppers cliffside, and my thought is, Adaris, we're gonna put you right here, close to the edge, but not too close. You got this elegant dress on, and I think I can frame something really nice where we have the cliffs, we have all the spraying water, we also have the shoreline. This is just a beautiful scene. This is really nice too. I might be able to shoot that way as well, but I don't think the sky is quite as dramatic. 
Here, the sky, I mean, my goodness, you couldn't ask for a better sky. So I'm gonna just go ahead and find my positioning. I'm trying to expose right now for the sky, and so I'm at ISO 64. I'm shooting at 2.8. Right now I'm at about a 60th of a second. I can actually get the edge of the cliff to kind of show behind her. It looks like she's more precariously perched up here than she might actually be. So I think this looks really good, but of course she's completely dark. You can't see any of the scene. So I'm gonna get my trusty old assistant here. I need you to bring our pro photo light. Be careful when you walk. And I want a light from out from the ocean. So it's Mike. Yeah. Mike, let me get you to stand like right in here. Probably right here is good. This is a good spot. Basically, I want it to be, I don't know, four feet above her. Four feet above her? Yeah, it's more flattering to light from above than it is from below. I mean, that's probably good there. And now you can keep the light stand on the rock so you don't have to do any heavy lifting. So let me do a test shot here. And this light looks amazing. I might even drag my shutter a bit just to get some more detail out of the rocks. And Adaris, your face needs to point towards the light, but I want your nose to be down and towards me. Yep, and then I want you to make some eye contact right there. Turn your shoulders, yep, right there, perfect. Now right now I am shooting at like 50 millimeters. I'm gonna try to get a little bit closer and shoot just a little bit wider. And I think just by getting a little bit closer, it's gonna make the scene less compressed. It's gonna feel a little bit more open. Sometimes it's good not to be super far away zoomed in. I know that's what we always do, but in this case, I think 35 millimeters right here looks pretty nice. Great, and then right here, I want you to give me a really... So as I look through these images, I feel confident that I got my shot. Let's edit these and uh, see who took the better photo. All right, guys, we've had a chance to edit the photos. We submitted them to a third party. They put them on F-stoppers. Uh, and there's a poll going to see who took the best shot. We haven't even seen each other's photos yet. We're gonna see them in just one second. I wanted to quickly mention that we currently have the biggest sale ever going on on fstoppers.com slash store. If you're looking for photography or video tutorials to take your photography to the next level, definitely check it out. Uh, if you get any tutorial, they're 30% off right now. If you get two, you get both 40% off, three, 50% off four or more 60 percent off your entire cart we're so losing our minds here what we're losing we our minds it's crazy it's uh it's the end of the year we're going crazy okay let's look at these photos we can start with my iphone photo here is my before and as you can see when you flip to my after i darkened my shot up a little bit probably the biggest edit i did was i darkened the sand because i felt like the sand was a little bit too bright down there I think she looks great in this. I think the lighting looks great in this. Oh, and the other thing that I did, I don't know if you've noticed this, I faked the depth of field. So you know how portrait mode on the iPhone can fake the depth of field? Well, you can't do that and use the strobe at the same time. So I cut her out and then I blurred the background just a little oh, bit yeah, to make it look like it was shot with a More DSLR. shallow depth of field. Yeah. Hopefully soon, Profoto will be able to have that feature, right? Or is that, yeah, that strictly would be locked into the iPhone? I'm not sure. Well, this looks incredibly professional. And I've shot with the phone with a strobe before. I did a whole wedding bridal shoot. So I know what this can do. I have to say it's pretty pretty impressive. I mean, this is a pretty large screen that we have here, your laptop, my, my tablet. This does look pretty good. Let's see yours. All right, so here is my before and after. And as you can see, I don't know if you can see it swiping back and forth here on the iPad, but I did a little bit more Photoshop than what you did. Yeah, there's a, little, did. Uh, there's a little bit of lengthening to her legs there, a little bit of uh, tucking going on with the dress. That was more or less, I don't know if you can tell this, but I, I actually, I said this in the video, I wanted the cliff to be on the right side of her, but the final picture didn't have that. So I Photoshopped the cliff in there just a little bit more. So she had a little bit more separation. <laughs> okay. And then her feet bothered me because they were like clinching. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so I actually used a different foot and just kind of put in there. But You uh, spent a lot of work on this in post, but it looks amazing. I mean, it looks really, really good. 
Um, I was kind of going for that Vanity Fair, yeah. Ann Leibovitz sort of look. Really I, I honestly, I love giving you crap, but I love your photograph. Here's the thing. I am going to guess that the average person who is not a photographer, professional photographer, would choose yours. It's It looks poppier. It's got the beautiful sky. It's got the beautiful background. But I think the average professional photographer will look at yours and say, maybe it's a little over the top and mine is a little bit more subdued and classic, and they might choose mine. For sure. I heard a lot of people say the twist in this was that I used a fake sky. The sky is so fake. Yeah. That's the real sky <laughs> That's that That's the I realest had. part of the whole photo. Well, are you ready to see the results? The first question of the poll oh, was, boy. which image is best? Number one, mine, or image number two, yours? Three, two, one. No! Oh, wow. Oh, that's close. This is the closest competition we have had yet. We are... It's within like 120 votes, which, I mean, we have a 600 to 500 votes here. I mean, that's a lot of votes. Yeah, so 55% choose mine as the best, So the, 45 you. That means the iPhone produced a better picture. And here's the thing, I, I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm excited I won in general, but I'm really excited the iPhone beat. How much did we spend on that camera and lens? Like five grand? I mean, a DA50 with a professional lens is not cheap. And the average person is like, yeah, but the iPhone costs a thousand bucks or whatever. Yeah, but the iPhone is a phone. Like the camera doesn't cost a thousand bucks. Well, I was using the, the last model, the 11, on the photo shoot that I did, which has now probably come down in price. Granted, the pro versions are expensive. Yeah. But, you know, in a couple of years, what we are using today will be hundreds of dollars. Yeah, if not free, people will just like, I've got an iPhone 10 over there that I got to figure out what to do with. Um, so I'm the, sure the, uh, the pro photo works with that phone as well. It does. It does. So the idea that you can take photos like this with a phone is insane, insane. Now, you do need the pro photo light. You do light need the do pro that. photo light, which in many cases costs more than the whole phone <laughs> itself. Um, I, I, I cannot recommend to the average person, uh, if you're a smartphone photographer, going out and spending $1,000 or much more on a pro photo light just for this feature. But for the professional photographers watching this right now, I can't believe I'm going to say this, but this actually produces professional looking results. I can't believe you won. Hell yeah, I won, obviously. Now, the next question was, we did another poll. Who do you think took each shot? Let's look at these results. Oh my gosh, 51% and 49%. Wow. I mean, that's basically- It's like 50, an election 50. vote right there. Yeah, it's so like so close. People just people just did not know. So Patrick took one. People thought that I. What this tells me is people think I'm the better photographer because they liked photo one. One, one percent. But they still they have less faith in you. Yeah. I'm a little offended that 344 people thought you were capable of taking image number two. Come on now. Yeah. Well, that was a fun experiment. That was, that that really was. And I, I don't know, I've, I've enjoyed doing these competitions with you and the other photographers, but the idea of giving somebody like a handicap and then they still come back and have the potential to win makes it even more fun. So I think we need to do more stuff like this. Let us know in the comments what the next handicap should be. Hmm. Uh, I think that could make it a little bit more, like maybe, Maybe one person is allowed to use post-processing and the other isn't at all, or something like that. Let us know in the comments and uh, we'll see you in the next competition.